All right, welcome everyone to the the 7th of June 2023 Aries Working Group call. This is a hyperledger call, and so the antitrust policy and the uh, code of conduct are in effect. The uh, link to the agenda is based repeatedly in the chat. Uh, if you'd like to uh, view it or make any changes, um, I, I promise I will not do this forever, but but uh, for now, uh, for today as well, please do include yourself in the attendees list. It's really helpful as we try to uh, figure out uh, who is, is present for some of these uh, important discussions. And so um, please do so if you can. Uh, it requires a, uh, a login, but, uh, but most of you will probably already have one and the login is free and easy to get. Um, so uh, you, if, you, if you go try to log in, you'll get instructions on how to do so. Um, so grateful that, uh, that you all are here. Um, anyone would like to, is there anyone here that would like to introduce themselves? Hey, yes, I'm, I'm new. Um, my name is Janelle and I'm an intern at Matrix Group International. We're in Northern Virginia. And one of my projects this summer is going to be exploring SSI and verifiable credentials. So I'm just here to learn more. Janelle, welcome. Glad you're here. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? If someone wouldn't mind uh, and, uh, adding uh, uh, Andre via his request in the chat, that would be great. Um, perfect. Uh, so Janelle, you're dropping into the middle of a, of a semi-large conversation today. So there's a bunch of context, but the pre previous several meetings do have uh, call recordings available um, that uh, uh, we won't cover all of the context. Um, but, uh, but if you end up confused today, then hit those recordings. Uh, anyone else, of course, is welcome to do so. And our, and our calls are, are, the recordings are regularly posted for folks to follow along. So, um, so very much appreciate that. Um, announcements. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Dice Europe is happening like now-ish in Europe um, uh, today and the next couple of days. Um, and, and then as well, the other thing that's going on, I think I currently right now is the Diff's uh, Did Hack XYZ Hackathon as well. Um, is going on uh, kind of right now as we speak. Um, Stephen, I'll ask you later to give us a quick uh, recap of the Noncreds workshop um, the, because that fell off of the announcements since it actually happened. Um, but uh, but before we get to that, any other announcements or work status updates that we want to share today? Uh, Sam, I attended the uh, Bifold and uh, AFJ meetings recently and AFJ released zero or zero um, four days ago, uh, which has all of the uh, shared components work in it. Uh, so congratulations to that team. They've been pushing pretty hard on that. And um, Bifold ran some tests of their code base against that and found one issue, I believe. And so we'll be looking for a fix to that and then they plan on issuing an update pretty soon against that i understand thank you warren for highlighting that uh this this move there this release for the fga community is huge uh as well as for all of us because of the work that they've been doing with uh, with integrating shared components so this is, this is a big deal warren thank you for for highlighting that all right so we have on our agenda today, um, the main uh, the topic will be an o OWF presentation. I see Tracy here, um, and uh, which is fantastic. Thank you, Tracy, for coming. Um, and then, uh, but and then some open discussion. But before we get there, I wanted uh, to to see if, Stephen if you'd be willing to give us a quick update on the Anoncreds workshop uh, done this last week. Sure, um, we had. Um... A workshop Hyperledger hosted, <coughs> excuse me, on last Wednesday, a week ago today. Um, lots of participants. We had something on the order of 400 people uh, express interest. Um, we had 200 people show up um, at some, or, you know, during the, the webinar. And then um, at, even at the end, we had 70 people hanging in three and a half hours into it, so which was great. We went through a lot of the features of an OnCreds, 
Um, we used um, a tool um, traction that allowed for a really simple way to um, experiment with an on credits and experiment with, <clears throat> with effectively Aries tools as well. And uh, one of the, the fallouts is I think we're going to try to spin up an instance of that that the community can use at any time to to do experiments and have their own, you know, uh, their own agent to experiment with an on creds, but um, lots of new interest in um, in using using an on creds. Um, one of the sections talked about an on creds in W3C format, and part of that was a, a demonstration that Patrick Saint Louis um, put in uh, from ID Lab that showed um, a non creds credentials um, issued, um, requested, presented, and verified all using um, W3C format, using the Chappy um, browser interface and a Veris One wallet for holding, um, for holding the credential and, and presenting it, which was quite something, something that hadn't been seen before. And in fact, um, the credential had both an non-cred signature and a NIST signature on it, which meant that it could be verified by either um, a, a verifier using an non-creds with all of the privacy preserving features of that and with a, um, uh, uh, a, a verifier using uh, purely NIST signatures and um, losing the, the privacy preserving features, but still able to um, present the credential and have it verified. So that was a pretty neat work. Um, Rodolfo uh, Miranda also uh, demonstrated um, using Cardano with an on cred. So so basing the work on on Cardano um, blockchain, which was really cool. So um, fantastic work by those two in in presenting the, uh, the material for the for the course. Uh, Stephen, thank you for the report. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, which which format was uh, of the credential was was in fact presented by the Veris One uh, wallet? A non creds verifiable present presentation. They presented a non creds out of Veris One. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It's That's so cool. This is all Patrick's work. Um, it, really impressive what he did. Um, so yeah, pretty neat. Uh, very very cool. Uh, thank you. Um, for that uh, report. Um, are there any other uh, changes, uh, changes or adjustments we want to make to our agenda before we get going here today on the main topics? Uh, excellent. At this point, uh, Tracy, am I handing this over to you? Uh, sure, you can hand this over to me. Let me stop sharing and I will All right. you have the floor. All right, so uh, let me start by saying, uh, for those of you who don't know me, that I am playing dual roles here. Um, so I am the Hyperledger Foundation Technical Oversight Committee Chair uh, and have been involved in the Hyperledger community since 20, 2016, I think it's been. Um, so uh, shortly after it formed. Um, and I also am playing the role of the chair of the technical advisory council for the Open Wallet Foundation. So um, let's just say that playing these dual roles is uh, somewhat of a challenge to, to be impartial <laughs> one way or the other, um, but I'll do my best to, to do that. Um, I, I do want to provide you guys with all of the information about where we are with the Open Wallet Foundation uh, so that you guys can make uh, decisions based on facts um, and uh, really, you know, any sort of questions that you have, I ask that you please stop me as we're going through. Um, don't let me just talk at you because that will never be a good sort of um, interaction that we have. So please, please, please stop me, ask questions. Uh, I will try and keep an eye on the, the hand raises and, and the chat as best I can. Um, but if, if, something shows up and I'm not catching it, please just interrupt me. I'm happy to have you guys do that. Uh, so this presentation here is a presentation that is on the Open Wallet Foundation website. 
I'm just going to use it as a reference point um, more than anything, rather than trying to, to go through it, because I think there's stuff in here that we can dig deeper into based on kind of some of the discussions that have happened and, and where we're at right now. So um, just, just to start with, obviously, it's Open Wallet Foundation is a sister project to the Hyperledger Foundation. It is intended to be a neutral home for open source projects. It is not intended to uh, be a place for standards, um, but rather the implementation of standards that are focused on the development of interoperable digital wallets. Um, so just to, to level set kind of what this group is all about and what it's looking to do. Um, so obviously, uh, you all know that today we have a variety of different sorts of assets. Um, I also work for Accenture. At Accenture, we like to talk about identity, money, and objects uh, as being pieces of, um, you know, different sorts of credentials that can be stored into a wallet. And the idea behind the Open Wallet Foundation is to be larger than just decentralized identity and to focus on a number of different sorts of um, assets that we would have uh, contained inside of our wallets. Now, obviously, identity is a large part of that. Um, and uh, yeah, I probably should have said at some point, I um, when I was introducing myself, I'm super, super proud of all of the work that the decentralized identity community has done within in the Hyperledger Foundation specifically. Um, I think this is a great community and I think a very welcoming community. So um you know just just the level set that you know i think the work that you guys are doing here is something that is of extreme importance and um you know obviously it will be important as we look at wallets um one of the things about the open wallet foundation is it is um, based out of the eu um, and so there is a lot of discussions about uh really the the eidis and the eudi um, architecture reference framework uh, that is put out. Uh, and so, you know, just to, to level set on kind of where they're coming from um, as far as, you know, what, what we're looking to do with interoperable wallets. Um, I think there's a lot of words on here, but obviously we want these digital wallets to be flexible and we want them to be modular in the way that they are, because what we're trying to do is build um the open source code that others can use to build their wallets on top of um, and so basically being able to have a modular components that can fit together in any way shape or form that people who are developing wallets for use um, can use and be interoperable across those different wallet platforms that people might uh, create and develop um, you've probably seen this picture um, Obviously, what's in the middle there is not fully baked in any way, shape, or form. Again, just focusing on the fact that uh, we do have identity, money, and objects that we would be storing in our wallets, and that those things should be able to be accessible through many different means, um, be them the web, mobile, desktop, headsets, or hardware-based. Um, so, so that's really what we have here. Um, so here's the, the picture that I think is an important one about where it is that we're focused uh, with the Open Wallet Foundation. It's really on that engine. Um, so building that open source Open Wallet uh, Foundation engine that people can then build their proprietary wallets on top of. Um, and then obviously, you know, um, how it would work to become a committer. You know, this is uh, something that's here, but obviously, we do not uh, specify or define what those requirements are. That's really up to the maintainers of each project. So very similar to the way that the Hyperledger Foundation is working, we are not forcing any sort of governance on our projects. Uh, we really intend for the projects to govern themselves and to decide what it would mean to become a committer or a maintainer of a project. Um, so you can see there's obviously many um, standards development organizations that exist. Uh, they're developing many standards. We would want to be implementing these different sorts of standards in the Open Wallet Foundation uh, within the engine so that people can, again, build their wallets on top of. Um, 
yeah, I mean, similar to Hyperledger, we're going to be a consortium of, of companies. Right now we have four premier members. I think there's something in the range of 20 um, uh, general members. And then we have a number of associate members that exist within the, the project, uh, within the foundation right now. Um, and so uh, I think we've talked about what that is. Obviously you guys know what open source is. We don't have to focus on that. Um, I think the general piece here is the focus on interoperability, which is important for us. Uh, we do want any sort of wallets that are developed to be able to communicate with one another, exchange different sorts of credentials um, and, and be able to um, really think about this from you know, really the legal perspective all the way down to the protocol perspective and, and what that will look like. So um, that's kind of the focus. Uh, these proposed initial building blocks were things that we were looking at before the foundation started. Um, whether or not these are the things that people decide to bring into the Open Wallet Foundation is completely up to people who decide that you know the Open Wallet Foundation is the right spot for them to come in and, and contribute code. Um, currently, we've had two uh, lab proposals that have, that have been approved uh, by the Open Wallet Foundation that is specifically focused on SD jots, one for Kotlin, one for Python. Um, and so that's uh, where we're at right now as far as projects go. Um, I think this page is something that we've talked about in a few meetings, but I think it's worth spending some time on um, just to contrast to uh, the Hyperledger Foundation and what that looks like. So obviously this piece at the top is one change. Um, so as I mentioned, we're um, part of the Linux Foundation Europe, whereas Hyperledger Foundation is part of the Linux Foundation. Um, so this, it would be where Hyperledger Foundation falls as a sister project to the Open Wallet Foundation. The, uh, we do have a governing board that's made up of premier members, as well as a uh, member from the general members, uh, elected members, similar to what we have with uh, the Hyperledger Foundation. Uh, I do also sit on the governing board as the TAC chair, similar to how I sit on the Hyperledger governing board as the TOC chair. Um, and so that's kind of the governing board makeup. We do have uh, new to uh, the Open Wallet Foundation versus what exists in the Hyperledger Foundation is there is a government advisory council. So these are people who are made up of the different um, national governments who are going to be helping to advise the Open Wallet Foundation on different sorts of regulation that is related to wallets and how they're they're being used or how they're being regulated. Um, so, so being able to bring that kind of set of uh, knowledge in uh, across the different nations uh, and the way that they're they're thinking about regulating wallets is, is an important aspect. And so that is one major difference uh, between the Open Wallet Foundation and the Hyperledger Foundation. The, the second minor difference, I would say, is the Technical Advisory Council versus the Technical Oversight Committee. Um, I have to get my, my T's and my C's correct in uh, what's in the middle there. But um, the, the major difference at this point is that in the Hyperledger Foundation, the people who are on the Technical Oversight Committee are elected as people who are maintainers of the different projects. Um, and so they're elected by those maintainers. Um, and, and so I think that's a, a major difference right now. Uh, and that the Technical Advisory Council and the Open Wallet Foundation is made up of premier members and two at-large um, community members. That may change in the future once we actually end up with projects. But I think to start with, um, similar to the way that the Hyperledger Foundation started with a number of premier members, um, you know, it may very well switch um, from what it is. Um, a lot of the governing documents that we created in the Technical Advisory Council uh, for the Open Wallet Foundation is based on what we saw with the Technical Oversight Committee within the Hyperledger Foundation. So they're almost directly um, copied from there. There are a few differences and we can look at those specific differences because I think those might be 
of interest to this group, um, just so that you guys can see. Um, the major differences I'm thinking about are just improvements around um, reviewing projects annually, um, which is something that we're currently talking about in the Hyperledger Foundation um, TOC. The other um, piece is just some, some project lifecycle changes, uh, and so we can take a look at both of those. The projects, again, um, very similar to what we see within the Hyperledger Foundation, where we're be made up of a, a number of different projects. So um, I think the, the rest of this, probably not too important for this group. Uh, they're really about member benefits and uh, that sort of thing. I think, you know, I'm going to pause here, but I do want to also take you through kind of the governing documents and, and that sort of thing, just so you can see the project life cycle. But I, I think I'll pause just to see if there's any questions at this point. Yeah, Alex. Hi, thank you. Um, very interesting. I just found the slides on the side as well. One question, which may be very basic, but the, the slides imply that the, um, not imply, they suggest that the focus is more on personal wallets as opposed to say business wallets or more abstract ideas of wallets. Can you speak to that at all? Yeah, so there, there is definitely, I think that sort of uh, view, but there has also been the same exact questions and commentary of, that you just asked about how do we, how do we expand this definition of wallet beyond just uh, a personal wallet to think about organizational wallets, to think about um, you know different sorts of wallets that might even be for devices, uh, those sorts of things. I don't think that there's any restrictions around us saying that these projects are only going to be focused on personal wallets. I think that's just the, the in general, the, the way that the, the slides have been written. Um, you know, I think it's going to be completely up to the technical advisory council as to whether or not a project makes sense to bring into the Open Wallet Foundation, the same way that uh, we do in the Hyperledger Foundation where the technical oversight committee gets to decide what makes sense to bring in. Um, my, my take on this is that anything that uh, will help with the um, aspects of wallets and interoperability between those wallets is is completely fair game to bring into the Open Wallet Foundation. Um, we haven't put any sort of limitations at this point in uh, in the Technical Advisory Council about the sorts of projects that we'll be um, accepting. So, you know, I think it's important to note that whereas Hyperledger Foundation has been around for a while, they've gone through a number of different technical oversight committees and have some sort of, um, at least if not written down, some sort of, you know, um, community-based knowledge that exists about the sorts of projects that they would accept. That hasn't happened yet, obviously, in the Open Wallet Foundation because of the, the newness of the Open Wallet Foundation. Um, I would expect that as we get in project proposals and we see, you know, um, where those edges are of the sorts of projects, then we can start to, to better define, you know, yes, this makes sense or no, this doesn't make sense. But at this point, we're not there yet. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. All right. If there's no other questions at this point, I do want to just quickly run you through kind of this uh, TAC uh, website that we've put together, just so that you guys can, can have a look. Um, so this page here uh, is just an introduction to what the Technical Advisory Council is. All of the information that's on it is based on the charter that uh, exists for the Open Wallet Foundation. So there's a number of responsibilities that the TAC has around um, the, that strategic vision that we were just kind of talking about um, for, for the community itself, um, making any sort of recommendations as far as what money we should spend uh, for development sorts of resources or technical sorts of resources to the, um, in this case, it'll be the governing board. Um, and then obviously electing that chairperson creating and maintaining uh, our project lifecycle procedures and processes, determining when that technical project should be admitted um, and any other matters that the governing board might 
be necessary. But again, as I mentioned, this is one change right now between the way that the, the makeup of the TAC exists in the Open Wallet Foundation versus the Technical Oversight Committee and the Hyperledger Foundation um, about who is part of this. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that's just an, an important call out right now. Again, I don't see that this is probably long term. Um, I do potentially see once we start to get a number of projects in that this may change, but we'll we'll see how that all works out, and what people want to do. Um, all the meetings are captured, meeting notes, recordings are captured in this meetings tab. If you are interested in seeing any of the discussions that we've had, feel free to take a look at that. The governing documents, um, again, mostly based on what we've done in the Hyperledger Foundation, that the main difference uh, probably is around the these two, the project life cycle and the project annual review process. Um, specifically, if we look at the project life cycle um, and we take a look at the different stages, um, this is where you'll see a difference. So we do have labs as a true portion of this project uh, stages that exist. Um, we do obviously in the Hyperledger Foundation have labs, but it's not really part of the um, the stages. You can see you can actually come back to a lab stage if um, during the annual reviews that makes sense to do that, um, which is not the case. There's no going back right now in the Hyperledger Foundation lifecycle. Um, growth is very similar to what we have for incubation, um, but we do call it a growth stage because it's about achieving different growth metrics and then impact is when you've got people who are actually using your projects and there's some impact in the ecosystem um, and, and so that's a bit different than, than what we have in the hyperledger foundation um, where we have a graduate and you can basically stay at graduate it's possible to come from impact and go back to growth or to come from impact and go back to labs um, so just you know, um, be aware that that is a, a difference in the way that we look at things within the Open Wallet Foundation between the Hyperledger Foundation. Um, the second difference is obviously this project annual review process, where annually we'll take a look at each of the projects to make sure um, you know whether a lab is active or we need to just archive uh, that repo um, to make sure that growth stage projects are actually making progress towards their impact stage and whether impact stage projects is maintaining their progress to actually remain in the impact stage. So this is a, a, a difference uh, between the, the two projects. Um, all of these other things probably very much based on uh, something you'd see in the Hyperledger Foundation with major, maybe some minor uh, discrepancies and differences, but nothing that is major enough for me to remember <laughs> at this point and, and to bring up uh, to the group. Um, questions kind of on this project life cycle because i think this is like i said um a bit different than the, the hyperledger foundation one okay if there's no questions on that just uh two other or maybe a couple other points. We do have special interest groups. We currently have an architecture special interest group that's been going on since before the Open Wallet Foundation started. Um, so we do have a number of things that exist in the architecture SIG that we've been talking about. We just recently uh, brought in this credential format comparison um, that is based on uh, some of the work that was done at the Identity Internet Identity Workshop, as well as the reboot, rebooting Web of Trust um, back in uh, 2022. So there's some, some information on comparing the uh, different sorts of credentials, uh, as well as the, the uh, rebooting Web of Trust paper um, that was written. Uh, the other piece right now, we've got a task force that's focused specifically on OID uh, for VC, looking at projects that might exist and whether or not uh, we could find projects who are interested in contributing to the Open Wallet Foundation. Um, and then just lastly, I'm working on this page today locally, 
um, these are the two projects that we have in their, their current life cycle stage. So I think with that, I'm going to stop talking for a bit because my um, voice seems to want to disappear at the moment and see what sort of questions where I should have focused that I didn't focus, things that you're interested in. Um, and we can take a look at that. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, open for questions. Hey, Tracy, uh, this is Helen Garneau. Um, thank you so much for the great presentation. Um, I found it really informative to sort of see where it came, where Open Wallet Foundation came from and, and the mission and all that in the overview. I think I was at the, um, in Dublin at the first sort of meeting before it, I guess, was officially launched. And mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, it just, it seemed like there was a lot of excitement and um, it, it, yeah, it sounds like a really cool program. Um, I was just curious, one of the one of the um, questions that was brought up in one of the previous ARIES meetings was about the different foundations that uh, to be a member um, that, that all sort of deal with, you know, this kind of world of wallets and identity and governance and et cetera. Um, and to be a member for an organization, especially a startup organization, to be a member of, say, TOIP and DIFF and Hyperledger and now OWF. Um, you know, it could be that there is a kind of a financial drawback um, in in maintaining a presence in all these, you know, kind of communities. I was just wondering if there was ever kind of a, a thought to combining Open Wallet with another or like starting it within an, an existing project or an existing foundation to try to um, you know, uh, mitigate some of the the kind of issues <laughs> that that might come up might arise uh, for an organization kind of spread thin um financially for you know joining these organizations or if there was any thought about you know um growing OWF within another foundation or project yeah um so Helen I, I completely agree with you it's not even just startups that have issues that even the large companies have talked to a few right who've been like well we can we can uh find the budget for participating in another organization. So I think it's, it's any organization, right, that the, that we have to be concerned about when it comes to creating new projects or new foundations um, in the Linux Foundation. So uh, I was not involved in any specific conversations around, you know, whether or not Open Wallet Foundation, well, maybe I should say, maybe I was. Um, I think I did mention it to somebody, right? Like, hey, why is this not part of, the, the Hyperledger Foundation. Um, but I do know that there were a number of people who did ask this question, right, a, around why why new foundation, why are we doing this separately? Um, and, you know, I, I don't know that anybody ever got a great answer to that question um, when it was asked, other than, well, there's a lot of interest in wallets, and, and so it seems to make sense to, to have this as a separate foundation. Um, I will say that there are still ongoing conversations about basically the the number of digital identity uh, or um, what are they what are we calling it the trust ecosystem that exists within the Linux Foundation um, and, and whether or not there's something that we could do to have um, you know a single cost for participating in all of these foundations versus many different costs. Now, when we have this conversation. Uh, we're going to need to, to basically have a number of people come to the Linux Foundation and say this is a this is a concern for us. Uh, this is something that we want to change, that we want to do differently, and then we're going to have to figure out how to do that. Right? Um, there's obviously going to be a lot of um, questions, concerns that have to be worked through. Things like trademarks, things like um, governance. You know, each of these different foundations has their own governing board, their own technical X committee, right? Whatever that AOS is, right? Um, so, so you know, how do we bring these organizations together such that now they're governed in potentially a different way? Um, now, we are we have been told when I have those conversations with people that this has been done before in the Linux Foundation. 
Um, but the, it does require a lot of work to, to make that happen. And so in order to make that happen, obviously it's, it's organizations coming together and saying, here's what uh, we think needs to be done and here's how we would do that, right? Like take and um, make some sort of proposals so it's that, um, you know, we can go to each of these different foundations, have this conversation, see what needs to change. Um, it, it's collaboration across these different uh, organizations to, to do this. So um, I, I wouldn't say that it's impossible, um, but it will require a lot of work. So um, I think, you know, we're, we're behind you with that sort of statement uh, at Accenture as well, right? Like we have the same question of, how do we get a volume discount? Because we're involved in so many different things, um, you know, at a minimum, but uh, obviously nothing's been decided there and, and it's really going to require us to, to come together as a, a group of concerned organizations and, and bring that to the Linux Foundation with probably some sort of proposed plan for how we make that happen. So I, I do feel like we need to mention that neither the Hyperledger or Open Wall Foundation requires payment for anyone to be involved either to use or to contribute to the code of the projects. Uh, the, the, the membership has to do with uh, sort of being involved in, in the sort of the higher level leadership and, and governance pieces of those, which isn't unimportant, but, um, but, but neither organization requires membership to to be involved for example in this meeting um you know there there's i'm sure there's a number that are that are not involved and that's that's a or that, that are not paying members um to hyperledger or to the linux foundation on behalf of hyperledger and so that uh that's an important thing to, to recognize that from from the perspective of developer developer involvement both organizations have the same low barrier to entry which i appreciate yeah, thank you for that, Sam. It was actually one of the first things that crossed my mind when Helen asked that question, and then I got lost in the answer of the question. Um, but I think it's so important, right, to recognize that, yes, uh, you can be involved in any way, shape, or form in the community without having to pay a, a dime. Helen, did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, it does. It sounds like there is a potential, you know, in the, you know, a twinkle in somebody's eye somewhere um, that this could get uh, a little complicated, um, you know, trying to, as you, as you described. Um, so looking at the work now to kind of move things around versus later to move things around. I don't know. Um, I just, again, just trying to <laughs> throw it all out on the table so we can see what we're, um, you know, kind of looking at, um, but no, I appreciate your, your description and your answer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, as individual organizations, we're probably not going to be able to make that change. Um, it's going to have to require a concerted effort by a number of organizations to say this is, this is what we want um, and to make that go happen. Um, more questions. So maybe maybe just to add to this, um, I was thinking that at some point it might make sense to, to put together kind of a comparison of where the Hyperledger Foundation is at with kind of the project services that they offer versus where the Open Wallet Foundation is at. So as I mentioned, right, it's very early days for the Open Wallet Foundation where, you know, um, let's see, February, March, April, May. So we're three plus months into this project uh, or into this foundation. There's still a lot that needs to be done. Um, there's things around, um, you know, do we use Confluence uh, uh, to capture this information? Do we use a, you know, um, GitHub pages? Do we use the wiki? Uh, so you know, there's, I think, a lot of different sorts of questions around that. Um, if we look at the Open Wallet Foundation, as far as, you know, we do have uh, the GitHub set up, we don't necessarily have a RIE in the Open Wallet Foundation yet. Um, for those of you who know Rai and have worked with Rai with GitHub and, and the way that he works, I've been doing basically some of that on the side, 
um, but I'm nowhere near as good as Rye at doing this. Um, so just, you know, FYI, that is a, a, a thing that doesn't exist. Um, you know, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done to bring up this organization to the level that the, the Harper Ledger Foundation is. Um, you know, within the architecture SIG, we're actually using the wiki here uh, in GitHub uh, to capture all the meeting minutes and things like that. Um, so, you know, uh, consistency across uh, the way that we're working at this point is not necessarily something that truly exists. And so, uh, you know, I think it's worthwhile to, to just say that we're very early stages and obviously there's things that you can do in the Open Wallet Foundation to help drive the direction at this point um, versus it having been pretty set in stone in, in the Hyperledger Foundation. But on the opposite side of that, right, um, Hyperledger Foundation is obviously a lot more mature in, in what it offers uh, than the Open Wallet Foundation is. So completely, um, you know, just something to be aware of, I guess, uh, and, and be uh, cognizant if, if if you decide that the Open Wallet Foundation is the, the right place because of the, the wallet aspect of things, um, that you'll be helping us truly build this to, to a place that is, um, is where we want it to be. Tracy, I, I very much appreciate your presentations. Any the, the, the next thing our, on our agenda is some open discussion. Is there any uh, final uh, comments or questions straight for, for Tracy before I move to that segment? Awesome. Tracy, thank you for that. Uh, and I, I appreciate you being here and presenting. Um, and, uh, and with that, we can go ahead and move to a little bit more of the open discussion piece of things. Um, the, um, Zoom has not yet added my other favorite feature is when you flip back and forth between sharing and not sharing that it remembers where you position things. But one can only ask for one feature at a time. Um, any, any thoughts generally about this topic as an open floor issue? Um, I have a couple uh, of my of my own. I have been trying to figure out what to do about this issue, and it's complicated. There's enough uh, facets in this conversation to excite a diamond dealer, and uh, and and there's it's it's complex, and there 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 are not obvious uh, straightforward things um, involved. Yet there seems to be a reasonable amount of pressure to understand. Uh, what the relationship between Aries and the Open Wallet Foundation is, and so, um, and, and having having something um, would be would be better than having all this discussion and, and simply uh, reaching no conclusion. Um, I uh, have been uh, thinking about that, and one of the realizations that I've had is that there's um, there's a whole lot of similarity that that hasn't really been sort of openly discussed that we all know but we haven't really been talking about and and there's a couple things really obvious uh one of them is uh completely compatible goals um the there's 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 very close alignment there uh, the licenses are compatible in the sense that it's not like this is a, a code license issue or or uh or that in, in including the open involvement practices of both organizations are 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 very compatible from that perspective um, indeed, the uh, the the actual uh, technical or or legal limitations behind uh, use of code from one organization in the other organization are just non-existent. Uh, it, it is um, it, it is very uh, it's very compatible from that perspective. Um, now, these are things that we know, but it's occurred to me that they may not be very well known particularly by the business folks that are sort of evaluating and trying to understand what's going on. And so in my effort to try and think of something that we could do, um, uh, partially to add a little bit of resolution and be able to move on with the other uh, very important work that we've got, um, but also to sort of add some clarity to, to things. Um, one of the things that I have thought might be possible 
is the the drafting of a collaboration agreement between the uh, Aries project and the Open Wallet Foundation. And that agreement is going to be, uh, I think, incredibly light, but can highlight the things that I talked about that are that do uh, that, that that already exist um, in, in the ability to work back and forth and to use code across organizations and various projects, et cetera, and um, and, uh, and and to highlight those things. Um, I think it could also uh, potentially involve um, sort of the regular sharing of information between groups. Um, to sort of keep uh, um, the, the information flowing. Uh, that way, those of us that uh, are unable to attend all of the meetings can still be sort of apprised of what's going on and understand where our attention uh, might be usefully spent. Um, and, and, and that we could, uh, and we, we could make that happen. That, that doesn't practically um, uh, mean anything, but it provides a couple of things. Uh, one is, is that it, it, uh, it clarifies what's going on in the minds of folks that are kind of looking at uh, what's, you know, at the situation and wondering what's going on. Um, but it also allows for the consideration of involvement to happen at a, at a far more uh, granular level. Part of the difficulty in this process is that is the sheer surface area of, of Aries uh, as compared to the um, to the youngness of the Open Wallet Foundation presents a fairly daunting task, I think, I think really um, sort of helpfully highlighted by Tracy um, in that there it's going places, there's things happening, but it, it is not uh, clearly at the stage that Hyperledger has simply for a sheer amount of time and, and effort um, that has been applied in the Hyperledger Foundation. And, and one of the opportunities there, I think that this would be, uh, I think, a relatively uh, simple thing to, to craft. Um, and while I'm sure it will be a little bit less far than some would like and a little bit more far than others would like, I think that as a community, I, I, I think that um, we can probably arrive at something of that nature. And, and, and I think what that does is it uh, adds some, uh, a little bit of sort of uh, uh, time local um, resolution to the issue and, uh, and allows for a further conversation to happen at, at, at a more granular level as there is specific interest in uh, in specific libraries or you know specific you know areas of, of collaboration there I think that, that could be useful and and, and we can uh, and we can address those at a, at a smaller level um, rather than sort of at the overall Aries level this certainly does not preclude anything in the future should there be a proposal um, for something of a large scale uh, thing but certainly allows for sort of the work to sort of move along and continue um, in, in, the, in the work that we have been doing. Um, and so that was one thought that I had. Um, any, any thoughts or feedback either on that approach or, or other approaches that we could take as a community? Alex, your hands up. Yeah. With the caveat that I'm coming to this quite fresh and without your guys' depth of experience, understanding of the nuance. With that said, the thought came to me just today, yesterday, that the location or the housing of Aries and where it lives or where it technically fits under, any issue around that might be mitigated to some extent or a greater extent when we better communicate out our value and what we offer and how Aries has evolved from its original de um, definition and its many facets. And we communicate that better and that might make the issue of where it needs to be perceived to be under less of a thing. Because if people can easily find the great work that's being done and they get what it is, then just thinking out loud, what, just back to the curious about the practical benefits um, that, that come from, from moving or changing or whatever. So that's not to say no or yes, it's just I think that um, I've just been looking the last week at the, some of the key materials, like the landing page on the Hyperledger site for Aries is, it's not just underselling, it's just missing a, a massive opportunity that we can take advantage of to better promote the amazing things that Aries is. And if that's all ramped up and people can find things easily and get a sense of what's going on, the great work's happening, will this be the same scale of pressure as to where it needs to actually be housed? Uh, Alex, thanks for that thought. I 
um, feel a little bit guilty about this um, because uh, not that I'm paid for this or elected for it really, but uh, serving as, as somewhat of a community organizer uh, for the Aries project, um, I feel like our focus has been on, on the doing and not on the marketing. Um, and, and open source is often called the duocracy and that, that is true, but I think that we have suffered um, as a community because we have not accurately represented ourselves um, in the minds of others. And, and even though we have sometimes been aware of misperceptions, have not done a sufficiently good job of, of, uh, of taking advantage of the opportunities that we have, as you described, to make sure that the online assets properly represent um, what, what we are. And I, and I definitely think that, that regardless of any other location change, uh, that, that increased attention to, uh, to marketing and to uh, awareness of, of projects is something that I have personally learned is more important than I had previously been giving energy to. Um, and not that I can be blamed for the success or failure of the community, but I, I feel like um, my own personal realization about that has, has been um, sort of quite stark in the last little bit. Um, and, I, and I definitely uh, am looking forward to better opportunities for, for, for that kind of activity in the future. <laughs> well, I think the little I understand is how much you've done. Some, there should be absolutely zero <laughs> play or guilt on your side as to any um, position. But then now's the opportunity. Now there's great things to be said. I was just shaping up some stuff, which I shared with a few of you last couple of days and there's a lot more to do i think there's a lot of opportunity to to sing the praises now and i think now is the natural time it's come up more because of things moving really fast it's not um necessarily a technical proving ground the same way anymore there's going to be a fast moving of solutions and standards and people having their favorite solution to all the needs that are emerging very quickly because it's not going anywhere it's not going away so um I just think of an acceleration of interest is happening right now and lots of things, lots of irons in the fire. So I don't think it's a miss thing as much as now it's an obvious chance. Let's do it. Let's more, well, it's, it's, the, it's the best marketing position to have when you've got something which is great, which can be marketed more clearly as opposed to trying to squeeze the last few drops of juice out of something that's, that's not up to the job. So we're in the former, which is perfect. Alex, thanks for making me feel a little better. <laughs> Tracy, your hands up. Yeah, Sam, I wanted to ask about the collaboration agreement that you suggested. Um, do you have collabor collaboration agreements with any, um, sorry, Zoom is telling me it looks like I'm done talking, but I'm not. Um, <laughs> so do you have any collaboration agreements with anybody who, uh, any of the other foundations, I guess, is, is the thing that uh, we can base this on? Well, we don't because it's a little weird. Um, normally collaboration agreements are done at an org level and Aries is, is not an org so much as a, as a project. So there are agreements, for example, between like Hyperledger and Diff and, and I know those organizations and the Open Well Foundation, but the, the issue at hand is not how necessarily how Hyperledger feels about the Open Well Foundation, but how the Aries project specifically does. So mm -hmm. this would be a little different because this has never quite come up the same way before. Okay. Even I, if yeah, it's I'm, less I'm, of an agreement and more, I, I don't even know if like legally we as a community can sign an agreement exactly, <laughs> but, but I definitely think some, so something published is what I mean to that effect. Well, here's, here's one of the things that I've realized. The maturity of the Open Well Foundation makes it largely an inappropriate move to, to suddenly decide to move everything over. It's a Herculean amount of effort to one degree, but the other side is, is that is that it's a little unfair for both Aries and the Open Well Foundation to, to make such a, a rapid move so fast. But what I don't wanna do is necessarily foul things up by kind of saying no or simply not doing anything. And then, and then sort of like leaving people unsure of what the goals of Aries really are. And, and, and because the goals are so aligned, I think that making some noise um, about uh, uh, to, to, to Alex's point, to making some no noise about what we do believe in at this moment, I think could actually be a, a, a really beneficial thing for both Aries and the Open Wallet Foundation. Yeah, and anything that we can do to, you know, help with the, the work, the collaboration across the, you know, Open Wallet Foundation Aries, I think is important for us to, to do, regardless of how we move forward. So, uh, you know, happy to help if, in any way I can with that. 
Um, very cool. So I realized that it's hard to talk about something in the abstract. And given a, a time machine, I would have loved to approach this uh, um, this meeting with maybe uh, somewhat of a draft of an agreement uh, or some sort of statement that we can make as a community. Um, I uh, have that on my list to attempt to draft such a thing. Um, I, I am without the authority, of course, to say something on behalf of the entire uh, uh, Aries community without uh, significant uh, sign off or, or approval or at least non objection from the Aries community. And so um, I will commit to having such a thing uh, present at our next meeting, uh, uh, hopefully in advance, um, so that we can uh, gather some feedback and uh, and improve it. And, and then at some point, um, obviously sooner is better than later, um, you know, reach some uh, some unified thing on it. If someone has a better approach than than this, I, I'm, I'm all ears. Um, I'm just trying to figure out the sort of the right thing that we can that we can do to to sort of take the next step or or move forward in a way that um, that, that helps us as a community to, to 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 sort of manage the issue and the in the public understanding of what's going on. Um, we are out of time. I appreciate everyone being here. Uh, please jump on the Aries channel uh, uh, if I can be helpful or um, or, or if uh, um, and then as soon as I have uh, some sort of a draft, I will circulate that also on um, on the uh, the Discord uh, channel for Aries. Um, and so please keep an eye there in advance of our next meeting. Um, Tracy, I appreciate you coming and presenting today. And uh, and I uh, uh, look forward to maybe finally having an idea about something that we can do. Um, and we will uh, see you all elsewhere and all the other calls we are in together and, uh, and next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Tracy.